This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. The procedures described in this video may differ from your certification agency, instructor, and teammates. We recommend that you follow the procedures most suitable for your situation. An important topic in the PADI sequence of technical diving courses is emergency decompression procedures. PADI provides a set of emergency procedure slates to help in this training process. Even with the slates, some new technical divers find it difficult to grasp these concepts. In this video, we're going to discuss a technique to improve the learning and referral process for emergency decompression procedures. So what we're going to do is create a series of flow charts for the emergency decompression procedures. For those not familiar with flow charts, basically what they do is represent a process and they flow down and to the right and use a variety of different symbols. The first symbol that we'll be using is an oval, and this represents either a start or stop process. The second symbol is a decision structure, and this has two ways that it can go, either yes or no, or true or false. The third symbol is a rectangle, and this represents a process that's going to be conducted. Let's first look at the simpler of the two emergency decompression procedures that we'll look at in this video, and that is the missed single deco stop. So we'll start with our missed single deco stop flowchart symbol of an oval. So the first decision we need to make is whether or not we can descend, and this is represented by a diamond flowchart symbol. One of our choices is yes, we can descend. If we can descend to our missed single deco stop, what we want to do is complete that stop plus one minute. The one minute accounts for your inadvertent ascent and your required descent. You then want to do a normal deco stop on all your remaining decompression stops. After all of your stops are completed, you would then surface. Now let's take a look at the other side of the decision tree for whether or not you can descend. In the event that you cannot descend, you would want to combine the stop times for both the stop that you cannot descend to and also the current stop time. You would also want to conduct a one and a half times longer decompression stop on any stops 20 feet or less. After completed all the extended decompression stops, you can then surface. Let's discuss the second situation. This is an omitted decompression stop from whatever your last depth was. This could include accidentally going all the way to the surface. Again, we begin with an oval flowchart symbol. Here, the first question is whether or not we're deeper than 20 feet. If we are deeper than 20 feet, we want to return to the stop depth if the stop depth is 40 feet or more, you are to perform a normal decompression schedule stop. After completing those stops, you will want to have your 30 foot and less stops held for one and a half times longer than the schedule calls for. You also want to extend your last stop beyond one and a half times as long as is possible. On completion of the last stop, you can then surface. Now let's take a look at the situation where when you're asking yourself, are you greater than 20 feet? The answer is no. This means you're at 20 feet or less. You now need to know if you can return to your original depth in less than one minute. If you can return to your original depth in less than one minute, then you want to hold your normal decompression stop time. You would then want to extend your last stop time beyond 1.5 times as long as possible. After holding the last stop as long as possible, you would then surface. 
Let's now look at the other situation in which we cannot return to our last stop uh, within one minute. Here we want to hold our 20 foot and less stops 1.5 times longer than the normal deco schedule. Next, we want to extend our last stop beyond 1.5 times as long as possible. We would then surface as before. Creating a flowchart of the emergency decompression procedures is really intended to help the student understand the process. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that anybody try to memorize the slates or uh, the flowchart. What I would recommend you do is to create flowcharts for at least these two processes in your wet notes. I typically suggest that students make the flowcharts in the back of their wet notes so that they're readily available. And if the flowcharts are drawn with a Sharpie permanent magic marker, they'll have a tendency to last a lot longer than pencil. Those pages can actually be removed and put into a new set of wet notes when necessary. In the event that you do not know what wet notes are, there is another video on the channel completely on wet notes. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful and sorry for the crappy graphics. And please subscribe.